It's time for Windows Weekly 128. Coming up, we tackle the upgrade conundrum. Paul gives you his bottom line security advice, and we learn Paul's true pirate identity. Windows Weekly is next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Windows Weekly is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therott, episode 128 for October 30th, 2009. The Upgrade Conundrum. Windows Weekly is brought to you by Audible.com. For your free audiobook and a whole lot more, visit audiblepodcasts.com slash windows. And by GoToAssist Express, an easy way to provide instant tech support to your customers, clients, family, or friends. For a free 30-day trial, go to gotoassist.com slash windows. And by Astaro Corporation, makers of the Astaro Security Gateway, the best unified threat management device in the market. Call 877-4ASTARO to schedule a free trial in your business. It's time for Windows Weekly, the show that covers all things Microsoft. Some days we talk about the Zoom, sometimes Windows Enterprise Server Edition 2003. Sometimes. Sometimes we talk about Windows 7. And sometimes we are full of righteous indignation. Yes. I want you to yes, go to are. your window, and I want you to open your window, and I want you to shout out your window. I'm mad as AG double hockey sticks, and I'm not going to take it anymore. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Like a Nick at Night program. <laughs> It's just, it's just like you're supposed to not build. Not quite teenagers, not quite children. Yes, exactly. Ladies you know, and gentlemen, that's... Mr. Paul Therott, he is the man behind the super site for Windows One Supersite.com. He is the news editor at Windows IT Pro. And as if that all weren't odd enough, he's also the author of the current bestseller. I have it on my Kindle. You should too. Co Windows on. 7 Secrets. Did you say co author? By the way, Did you get co author. Co author. So with Rafael right. Rivera? Sure. Does he get co author credit? Yeah, it was a kind of a sweetheart deal for him, really. But because um, he's a kid, you don't. You could just I say, know. you know, with a, you know additional material provided by some guy sure. named Raphael. Occasional or, input, but yeah, yeah. You, you don't have to give him any credit. I don't mind doing it. You I should, you it. know, John C. Dvorak. When I wrote chapters for him, would, yeah, would merely recognize. Yeah, yeah. would merely say in the foreword, uh, "Leo did something." Leo, somebody. <laughs> Leo did Thank something. you to Leo L for his input on <laughs> exactly. chapter thirteen. <laughs> yeah. No, th that's one way of doing it. You are a gentleman and a scholar, my friend. No, I don't know about that. So, are you feeling? Are you? Are you? Uh, have you? Have you uh, recuperated from the excitement? The uh, thrill? No, of, no, I have not. I'm no. pissed. Re what? I I am. You what, know what's the matter, Paul Thorat? Talk to me. Right. I don't mean drunk. I mean I'm <laughs> upset. Oh, I Robert, get knocked down, and listeners. then I get up again. I'm never gonna get me down. Yeah. Yeah, not not that one. Not that kind of pissed. <laughs> uh, you know, what last week what? Uh, when we recorded the podcast, I had gotten some emails from people who had gotten Windows Seven early and had done the upgrade install. Oh, the upgrade thing. There was no issue. You know that uh, upgrading would be uh, easy. Okay, so a good, I, rewind. Briefly, yeah. just to okay. say, the issue has been, and we had never really known until we got a copy in our hands of the release version of Windows, what mm. would happen if you use the Windows Upgrade Edition mm -hmm. to do and a you clean know what's install? Classic? You know what's really funny, Leo? What's that? This is, this is high comedy when you think about it. Uh, it's a week later. It's a week, right? I have in my hands, let me count, mm, 10, I'd say 15, 16, 16 upgrade keys I can use to perform different types of installations. Yes. And here we are a week later, yes. and I still can't actually tell you with any certainty what will happen. Oh. Uh, what I can tell you is what may happen, <laughs> what will probably happen. And I can give you some advice for things to do if those things that I, you want to happen do not happen. But no, but now, no, um, like memo from a Redmond, no uh, telegram, yeah, yeah, no hint, no smoke. Clearly signals. stated... This is the policy. This is how it works. 
This is how it will work every single time. Nothing this like is that. How, nothing like that. Yeah, no, nothing like that. How, that's odd. Does that strike you well, as odd? No, I, I wish it was odd. I wish it was unusual. But, you know, this is the way these things have gone. Uh, this is, it was like this with Windows uh, Vista. And, you know, we've been complaining about this all year long. Um, I've been begging them, please, uh, let provide this information. Uh, here's an idea. Don't provide the information, but give me the keys so I can test it. And, yes. and I'll at least uh, communicate what I believe to be the case. Um, after I talked to you, I went to the party we had in New York, uh, which was fantastic, by the way. And and thank you to everybody. Oh, at the up. beautiful Antarctica. And, and Dick uh, DiBartolo, the Gizwiz, yep, showed yeah, up. He said you gave him a copy of Windows. It's very nice of you. Um, great guy. He said it was a wonderful party. So you yeah, had, yeah. did you have a big you group know, there? Yeah, yeah. I don't know how many people, but I would say probably 50 or more. I mean, That's the guys from the bar were really happy with our... Uh, you know the turnout, uh, so yeah, uh, that was nice. I gave a copy of the book to the to the bartender, but don't get me distracted with the feel good stuff because actually, <laughs> you know, I'm the sorry, first thing, Paul. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Okay. Let's bring that rain cloud back out. It was a, that was bring a perfectly it was a wonderful wonderful experience, but let's move on from that okay. for a moment because what I really want to talk about is the absolute um, hellhole of an experience that this upgrade thing has been. Um, I saw you know Ed bought right away and. Uh, I went up to Ed and I said, actually, this happened the night before. So I saw Ed the night before the launch and I said, Ed, listen to me. I, I've been dying to find out this thing about the upgrade. And he says, oh, you too. And he said, listen, I've been bugging them all year. I asked them again and again. They always push me off. And his story was exactly the same as mine. You know, that this was the one question, you know, the one thing remaining, the one mystery about Windows 7. You know, how do we, how does this work? You know, what's the policy? What will or will not make that machine activate? You know, what are the different scenarios? Uh, Microsoft refused to answer these questions. Um, wait, 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 how did they refuse? Well, the way they did it was by putting us off. So uh, what it all boiled down to was, um, you know, we'll get you upgrade media. And uh, it will be sometime. I remember in the spring it was going to happen right around the release candidate. The release candidate happened. We'll have it in August. August came and went. So oh, we'll get a little closer to launch. Uh, closer to launch. Yeah, it'll be the week before the launch. And then the week before the launch, I asked. And I said, eh, we don't really have any, but... Maybe the day of the launch, we'll actually go out and buy some upgrade media, and then we'll hand them out. And I said, the, the day of the launch? Are you kidding me? I mean, you know, aside from the fact that I was incredibly busy that day, um, you know, the fact is around, around the world, millions and millions of people bought this upgrade package because Microsoft offered it at a steep discount. And it was a no-brainer, you got to buy this. But w without any explanation whatsoever as to how it would work or if it would work. It, I, it is disingenuous, at least potentially illegal, I think, from a contractual standpoint for them to do what they did because they did not spell out when this would work and when it would not work in any meaningful way. And, and here's the issue. Virtually everyone who owns a PC qualifies for an upgrade version of Windows. W what I mean by that is you have a PC and you want to upgrade it, you qualify, unless it's running Windows 98. I mean, it would have to be that old for you not to qualify, right? Windows 2000, Windows XP, the majority of people, right, today, XP, Windows Vista. You qualify. You just qualify. But beyond qualifying, there are all these difficult scenarios that don't quite equal what I think people expect to get. So, for example, uh, you have a 32-bit version of Windows XP because virtually all versions of Windows XP are 32-bit. You want to upgrade to, um, you know, Windows 7. Yeah. But. But. Well, you know, you have a 64-bit PC because you bought it, you know, within the last year or two. And it has 4 gigabytes of RAM, which Windows XP can't right. take advantage. Right. Now you want right. to put it at 64-bit, right? Of course. Perfectly logical. Absolutely. Reasonable to think. So. That you could. Um, I just buy an upgrade. Uh, it's just an upgrade, right? It doesn't, doesn't work that way. Doesn't what? It, you can make it work, Right. You can't, but you can't, you can't do an in-place upgrade ever from 32 to 64. Well, but, but, but we've already said we don't want to do an in-place upgrade, right? Right. I understand but, that. Because there's right. a 32-bit kernel on there. Yeah. You've got to wipe that stuff out. So here's the thing. Now, yeah. for many, many people, uh, based on my email, uh, if you're starting with a, uh, you know, you boot the computer, yeah. you run setup, you either blow away or do not blow away your existing Windows install, you know, depending on how you do it. It will work. It will activate. And, and I get email from those people, and, and I got a bunch of those emails before our show last week, and I was very excited because it seemed like no matter how they did it, it was working. Now, I think for, for a combination of reasons, uh, maybe uh, they, 
they just weren't descriptive enough or didn't understand the issues or whatever that uh, they weren't, uh, I don't think, understanding what was on the system and, and why it worked and so forth. And, and I still, you know, don't have a well, complete understanding. I, I talked to somebody, I'll give you an example. I talked to somebody yeah. um, who had took the upgrade, wiped the drive, installed yep. it. And he said it, it worked fine. I didn't have, you know, and, and I said, laptop. He said, yeah. He said Dell. He said HP. He said hidden partition. He said, oh, yeah, I noticed there was a partition on there. I think yeah. in many cases you've got people who don't know they have hidden partitions that actually contain the previous version of Windows, and I'm sure that's all Windows needs it, it to go. Text that, yeah, yeah. You know, there are people that might make a mistake in, um, you know, using some kind of tool to wipe out their computer because they they want to like have a clean install, right? But then when they boot it with the setup disk, it sees an empty hard drive and it doesn't qualify for the upgrade. No, what's amazing about this, and th this is a big problem, uh, you can run. A, a clean install, what Microsoft calls a custom install of Windows 7 using the upgrade media, which I am 99% positive that all of the media for Windows 7 are identical, that the only meaningful difference is the key, the product right. key, right. determines the type right. of install. I right. think that's true. I think it to be true. I, I can't state it as a fact, but I believe it to be true. Uh, oh, wait a minute, though. Yeah. No. Okay. Here's a data well, no, point. No, no, no. This is a data point for you. I have Windows Home Premium Upgrade. Installed on a clean hard drive, used the serial number by accident. And said no. Or ultimate. Oh, oh no, 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 maybe right. it was okay, vice versa. No, right, right, oh, right, right, right. So, I, 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 so the, right. the, the, the serial number does have to match. The serial number does have to match somehow. And I, and I didn't mean to. I should have qualified this. Okay. Uh, so I'll use Home Premium because there, this is the one that has the most different versions, right? Okay. So Home Premium Full, Home Premium Upgrade. Home Premium Family Pack. Uh, the disc for those three products, identical. That's right. my belief. Yes, I think you're right. Yes, between Home Premium and, and Pro and uh, Ultimate, you might see some differences, be tiny differences, because it has that one file uh, that determines what product edition you have. But as far as the the, the setup, uh, the, the WIM file and all that stuff, it should be identical. Well, and we know that because of the Windows Anytime Upgrade, all the data is on that disc. Yeah, but here's the thing. So, uh, yes, so there is a file on the disk that determines which version will be installed, absolutely. And if you do enter your product key, uh, it will match that, to be sure. And so there is code. This is one of the things Ed was talking to me about. We had a phone conversation the other day. I should say, by the way, um, I wanted to have Ed on the podcast today because this is something he, too, is very um, feels very strongly about. Um, he was unavailable because oh, he had... He was at a Microsoft event. So I'm um, hoping to have him on next week. He thinks uh, he, he, he didn't, he didn't uh, just, uh, I mean, he didn't mm -hmm. bring any firearms to the Microsoft event, did he? It was an, uh, uh, not a, a Windows event. So, uh, okay. I think it was. Uh, <laughs> it's not I like that guy was at the Obama rally with a gun. Right. No, I don't. Defending think, I don't his think. Second Amendment rights. No, sure, Ed, sure. Ed wouldn't do that. No. As, however frustrated no, if Ed is going to kill you, it will be with logic. <laughs> You're <laughs> so, right about that. You're right about no. Ed. Yeah, he'll destroy like you with his razor-like... Right, right. No, which is great. Yeah. Good. And, and that's what we need right now. Yes. So, but here's the thing. Any version of this disk, because the disks are identical, other than the, the thing that determines which version is going to be installed, it means that you can install without a product key, do a clean install with the upgrade media, and it will just work. For reasons this, no one understands. Well, no, no, no. I, by work, I don't mean activate. I mean, it will install. So in other words, you can use the upgrade media. Yeah. You can blow away whatever's on you the disk. You can do a clean install. Okay. Do a clean install. You can clean, you can clean install to a new hard drive. It will work. But, but the, the scary part is you think you're done. You have destroyed whatever you had before. But now you act, go to activate it. And it says, oh, no, no, no. You can't do a clean install with a upgrade media. This is the wrong kind of key. And now you're screwed. So you, you know? don't know until after the entire operation that it's not known. necessarily unless I'm, what I'm saying is for many people, many people may choose to not put in the key. Right. They will be fooled into thinking everything's OK because it does install. Right. And, and but then comes that scary moment. You know, you type in the key, so you click is... activate and then you wait and the product, you know, the progress bar goes across and it right. sits there at halfway across and you think, oh, God, you know, I'm screwed. And sometimes it doesn't work, you know. This is a good thing to know. Yeah. So what I've been doing is I've been do starting to document the different ways in which you can use the upgrade media to install Windows 7. 
And I found out, uh, this is via a reader, uh, that there is, in fact, a little, uh, Microsoft's calling it a hack, <laughs> that uh, will allow you to activate Windows 7 as installed with Upgrade Media after the fact. Uh, Microsoft is against this because they feel that in some cases uh, people will use this to uh, kind of cheap out and buy the upgrade media and not the full media like they should they think they should be doing and uh, that they will you know not pay as much for Windows as they should but see my contention is that for most people right um, you, when no one's trying to rip Microsoft off they have a PC that it's got a sticker on the side that says look it's got a product key it's from Windows XP or Vista right? This is 99.9% .9 of all PCs. I mean, there's a sticker with a product key. I, I don't have the disk anymore. Maybe I changed the hard drive and I, I just want to start fresh with Windows 7, whatever it is. You know, you do that clean install with upgrade media, it's not going to work. So I've provided a workaround. Um, it's simpler than the previous workaround. Remember in the Windows Vista timeframe, we had that uh, the double install type where you would uh, do a clean install with the upgrade media and then use the upgrade media again to upgrade the version of Vista that you installed to the same version of Vista and then you could uh, activate it. So my understanding is that, th is that that hack still works in Windows 7. You could do it that way if you wanted. But there's a faster way to do it. And I've, it's on my site. I'll just leave it at that. But Microsoft came out with a big blog post today where they said, you know, doing this may be illegal. <laughs> you know? And uh, the way they... Uh, the way they word it is that technically possible does not always mean legal. It like, also does not always mean illegal. Thank you. <laughs> and as I, I and I, I, what I did was I quoted, they quoted the EULA, the end user license agreement. Which, by the way, these are, sh my, these are shrink wrap licenses. Absolutely. You can't see left. The court has. Oh, by the way, by the way, when they're doing their little pre sale, where, you know, yeah, you know, come and get it, get them quick. They may run out, you know, half price off. Right. Never mentioned, by the way, you may have problems. You know, never right. mention that. And, um, and courts have not have upheld some parts of shrink lap licenses, but not this particular part of it. So it, no, but here, it's this not is not even clear. Part, here, here's the key part of the argument, and this kills me because Microsoft quoted this in their blog post. This, to me, proves my point, which is this it says, to use the upgrade software, you must first be licensed for the software that is eligible for the upgrade, i.e., you must have a qualifying previous version of Windows. Windows any version of Windows XP, any version of Windows Vista. Any version That's, of Windows XP or any version of Vista qualifies. Guess, guess what? That's everybody. That's everybody. <laughs> well, there might be one Mac guy who never owned a copy of Windows who wants to use it in virtualization. Right. Okay. Well, it's, I don't... That, it's a small article, number. You know what? My article... The articles I'm writing about this, the uh, the hack, you know, that I've published, this is not about pirating Windows. No. This is about providing people who have been buying Windows with new PCs usually or buying at retail if they have done that in the past. Some people have, I guess. They just want to get the new version. They qualify for the upgrade. They just do. And it does shouldn't matter how they want to install no, it. And they want a clean install, which everybody, you, me, and Microsoft... Everyone agrees it's the best way to go. Agrees is the best way to go. It seems to me you're doing exactly what your job is, what our job is here, yep. which is empowering consumers who already, all of them already have a qualifying copy of Windows to do what you, me, and Microsoft all agree is the right thing to do, a clean install, but which Microsoft apparently doesn't allow. Yeah. Now, uh, to be, well, to be fair... Uh, the most common scenario here is your PC is running Windows right? and you want to upgrade. Uh, an in-place upgrade, you know, if you can do it, if you're going from 32-bit to 32-bit, if you're going from Vista to 7, you know, okay, it will work probably. Uh, but there are issues here. The, the thing that, <laughs> this is what kills me about this. The most common, the, most, uh, the largest customer group that would want to upgrade are running XP. They don't support in-place upgrades from XP. So you have to do something else. Now, Microsoft does support custom installs with Upgrade Media. They do support it. And in, in, again, in most cases, if XP is on the hard drive, the, the way to do it is to you know, use Windows Easy Transfer to get That's all your That's what they want you to do. do. They want you to yep. use a transfer. That, and it, that will work. It's okay. You can boot from the disk. You can uh, trigger setup from within Windows XP as long as you're doing 32 to 32 a bit. Uh, in either way should work. It will detect the windows that's on the hard drive. Uh, it, will, it will, you know, and activation should occur. Fine. 
The problem is I've heard from too many people who have done just what I said and it didn't work. So for whatever reason, they, they, they're stuck. They have blown away their previous version of Windows. Uh, they have installed Windows 7 and now the clock's ticking and Windows will not activate. And they absolutely qualified for that upgrade pricing. They're not ripping anyone off. They, they got suckered into this early half-off price usually. And now it's like, great, now what? And by the way, there's also weird little side issues. For example, uh, they're offering a $29 deal to students, right? You can get Windows 7 Home Premium or a Windows 7 a Business. 29 bucks. it's a great deal. Except the way they package this stupid thing is not as an ISO, uh, that you could burn to disk and, and boot and so forth. But they actually, they actually, uh, it's like box files and you expand them and it creates the, the directory structure from the DVD, but not in, as something that you could burn to a DVD that would boot with. So the only way to install the thing is as an in-place upgrade, which doesn't help you if you have <laughs> Windows XP. It's like, you've got to be kidding me. You, you have already created, uh, you, they sell ISOs from the Microsoft Store, Right. They sell DVDs everywhere. Why don't you just give them that? Why did you make something different? You know, it's crazy. I, I, I just don't understand why they've made this so difficult. It's the simplest thing in the world. And they're, what they're concerned about, and this is an, an, a very common complaint about Microsoft, that there's, there's a lot of anti-piracy stuff in Windows that is aimed at the 1% of people right. or less who pirate software and what it does is put out the 99% yes. of people who don't. And this is a great example of something that is designed for some weird little sub part of our culture where you're, you're building your own white box PC and you, you just want to be cheap and, you know, save a little bit of money or whatever. But you know what? Seriously, if that's what you're doing, just buy the OEM version for crying out loud. I mean, <laughs> why? it's less money. Uh, uh, the OEM version of Windows 7 Home Premium, which is the full version, by the way, is less money than the upgrade version. If you buy it at Newegg, mm -hmm. why, why there, people aren't doing this anyway. So, uh, you know, no, this is, just, this is so aggravating. It's always my complaint. It's you know? not just Microsoft. All DRM and anti-piracy techniques have the same flaw. They punish, yeah. they punish honest customers and yeah. they do not deter pirates because pirates are getting right. their copy of windows from BitTorrents, and there's no problem at all. And, you know, Microsoft is concerned that by, you know, publishing this work around that I have, you know, I, I'm uh, helping pirates, you know, but I, news flash time, you know, these people are figuring this stuff out anyway. I'm not, you know, what I'm doing is helping customers. And I, I listen, Microsoft talks about all the feedback they get and how they respond to feedback and how they care about the customer and, you know, yada, yada, yada. Uh, from a sort of a more broad perspective, I would also point out that, you know, the big uh, mantra around Windows 7 is how it's simpler and easier and, you know what? This was a beautiful opportunity for you to apply that same way of doing things to the upgrade process, and you just didn't do it. And I think it stinks. And for you to turn around and uh, try to, you know, throw some legalese at somebody and say, well, you know, you might be breaking the law. You know what? The people who were reading my site and writing me by the hundreds to thank me for publishing that and to thank them for the work I'm doing to help explain these issues are your customers, your customers, not my customers. And uh, I don't understand why Microsoft is not doing a better job of supporting those people. It's ridiculous. It's it's this paranoia, frankly, uh, that drives all these companies who do DRM and uh, anti-piracy controls. I mean, look at what Microsoft did with XP. They put anti-piracy controls on it, authentication issues on it. Yeah. That wasn't enough, so they did Windows Genuine Advantage, which genuinely disadvantaged at a percentage. We don't know how many. As many as 5% sure. of all users with false positives. Um, they, they did the same thing again with Vista. They're doing it again with Windows 7. And I understand, you know, Bill Gates has always been terrified. Remember in the earliest days oh, yeah, of yeah, basic, yeah. he went to, uh, was it the homebrew yep. computer society and, and said, and held up a paper tape said, you guys are stealing my basic. Oh, he, he wrote an open letter. He, yeah. he accused everyone of being thieves. And by the way, uh, let's just bring it full circle. You can look at this blog post that some guy from Microsoft wrote today. It's exactly the same thing. You guys it's the corporate stealing culture. our software. Yeah. You know what? Screw you. That's ridiculous. Yeah. You should be ashamed of yourself. It's the corporate These are your culture. customers. Yeah, I agree. I agree. You, ridiculous. You can eat ridiculous. a little bit of piracy. Eat 1%, 2% of piracy. Support the people who are paying. Listen, I mean, uh, and the, the problem is, you know, when a company gets as big as Microsoft, when they're so successful, uh, you can only grow so far. So, you know, where's the next growth market, right? Uh, eventually, you turn to piracy because 
you know, pirated versions of Windows, I guess, are suddenly your number one uh, right. competitor. You know, even though it's it's still a tiny percentage. This this is uh, the thing I don't. Yeah, you know, we've seen this. The music industry never got it, and mm -hmm. and and what finally they had to realize was their competition is the free version that's on the pirate sites. Yeah, you are teaching your customers how to get around this stuff now. Yep. And by being overly belligerent about it, you're teaching them to hate you and to not care <laughs> yeah. what you want them to do. It's too bad. This is the only blight on what was an absolutely yeah. successful launch. Oh, I mean, unbelievable. Beautiful. It, the software is excellent. The launch was nice. Uh, you know, you, it's a nice feel-good vibe about the whole thing. You can, you know, you can be proud about running Windows again. How, how wonderful is that? But, you know, God, it's the simplest thing in the world. And I just don't, so, I just don't get it. Let's 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 take a break so you can you can calm down, have a couple of pints of beer, and uh, <laughs> or whatever your beverage of choice is. No more coffee though, okay? And uh, oh, there it is. <laughs> there's there's his there's is that a pint or a is, that's a liter? A, this is a Sam Adams glass, but I'm actually drinking water. No, I know. Um, but I do want to come back with some. Man, maybe you can't do this, but with some kind of straightforward recommendations for what people should do. Yeah. To do a like, clean install. Yeah, I mean, most like, everybody's going to buy a new computer. I've, I've heard so many people. Uh, boy, the radio show was almost all people who were said, I'm buying a Windows 7 computer. I mean, they, they were waiting. Right. By the way, that's the way to go. But I would just say as far as, well, what do you, you want? Let's, I'll do a commercial. And then when we yeah. come back, okay. just that's the basic, you know, all yep. this. All I, know, this I, do, I do have some I do have some basic advice. Just some basic tips. Because it's been very confused from, from the day that you and I did the Windows 7 launch party last week. I know. Um, and, and, you know, you were getting this stuff in as it was happening. People were saying it worked. Some people said it didn't. You came yep. up with a registry hack. Let's, let's get kind of by now a week later. Well, by the way, I stayed up, the, I stayed up late that night and installed it. And it, when it didn't work, <laughs> you know, on a clean hard drive, I thought, oh my God, oh, shoot. <laughs> yeah. They did it again. <laughs> you, how many, how many, well, I, I'm curious when we come back, how many times have you, you start counting, how many times have you installed Windows 7 now? It's in the last seven oh. days. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Start thinking. No, I know many times before that, yeah. but starting yeah, yeah, with yeah. October 22nd. Yep. <laughs> this is what I want to know. Before okay. we do that, though, I, I, I really want to talk about uh, Astaro. This is, you know, we talk about security a lot. And, of course, on security now, we talk about security. Uh, if you're in business, you don't want to be going around each and every computer in the in the company and installing antivirus, antipiracy, locking it down. You, you want a centralized unified threat management system that'll protect every one of your seats transparently, easily, effectively, and that is the Astaro Security Gateway. I am, I am just, I am a big believer in Astaro. Uh, many of you have tried Astaro uh, because uh, unlike most companies, they give away for home users and for non-commercial use, they give away the full version of the Astaro Security Gateway to run on your own hardware. But if you're in business, you can get a demo unit absolutely free and i want you to call them and try this in your business i'm going to give you a list of features and benefits so you understand what we're talking about here no no smoke and mirrors just very straightforward 877 the number four astaro you can get a demo unit you get you get absolutely the best of course industrial strength stateful packet inspection all the bells and whistles firewall you get intrusion detection and prevention you get uh, three antiviruses, two for email, one for the web. You get absolute control of the content, including peer-to-peer -peer networks, instant messaging, all of that stuff. But then you get some stuff that I don't think a lot of UTMs throw in. For instance, a very easy-to-use VPN that supports all the protocols that you want. IPsec, L2TP over IPsec, PPTP, uh, tunneling with SSL, which makes it very easy for the boss. And you know he's a knucklehead, so you want to make it easy for the boss. He's going to love it. Smithers, I've never had such an easy SSL experience. VPN experience. It's amazing. Smithers, you'll, you'll double your salary. <laughs> and if your name's Smithers, please don't, don't harass me. Uh, you can also, <laughs> you can also uh, uh, in, include encryption uh, into your standard, finally into your standards, without putting any software on the desktops. We've got full S-MIME and open PGP encryption, decryption, digital signature, all handled at the Astaro, at the gateway. That's the uh, new V7 Astaro uh, security uh, gateway. Uh, full support for operations in a virtual, uh, virtualized environment. Okay, so 
whatever you know setup you've got, you're set. VMware ready. Um, I, I just I I can't I if you're a large environment and you think you're going to grow, which is important for us, we keep adding desks. They've got uh, something they call active active clustering. So you can do load distribution for as many as 10 Astaro security gateways. You don't need to add additional load balancers or anything. You just add the gateways. That's patent pending technology. Like I can go on and on, but the best thing to do is to try it right now in your place of business. ASTARO.com worldwide. Uh, in the U.S. call toll free 877, the number 4, ASTARO, Astaro.com. This is security done right. If you're in business, you need Astaro. All right, Paul. So our recommend... And by the way, thank you, Astaro, for uh, supporting Windows Weekly. It's great. We've had them for years on uh, security now, and it's great to have them on Windows Weekly as well. So I... Okay, there's several different use scenarios. Anybody buying a new computer, easy. Buy Windows 7. Don't eat... It's a no-brainer. Just do it. Yep. Um, if you bought a computer in the last couple of months and you have the Windows 7 disk coming what's your recommendation there uh you know you, you bought a computer with yeah, vista but yeah. it's but it's windows 7 ready what do you do well yeah, see, <laughs> so here's the thing <laughs> uh, see, there's no answer you, you could upgrade it's easy well, to upgrade no, no, in place no, no, right no. in other words i guess what i'm saying is it, people what, different people want to do different things right, you know right if you have windows xp you don't have a choice you have to do a migration we know okay. that migration is a four-step process you're going to uh, back up your stuff you're going to uh, clean install the new os you're going to reapply your settings and data, and then you have to reinstall your applications. Okay. Okay. Four steps. And that can, like a, that can take a day. That we we've, we've oh seen yeah. that take yeah, a that's long a part long of a time. day. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That could be a long time. Now, as long as Windows XP is running on that system, right? Currently, it's on the hard drive, and you're installing it to the same hard drive, right? Uh, and by the way, this applies to Vista as well. If you want to do a migration rather than an in-place upgrade, which I would recommend, um, it should work. It should just work, right? Uh, the way to make sure it's going to work, by the way, I guess, and this is contrary to the way I've always installed Windows, but because of the uncertainty here, I think this might be worth doing, is, you know what? Put your product key in during setup because setup will bounce it if it's not going to work. So and that you saves wanna, you that step. It will save you the heartbreak right. <laughs> later, right? Um, of going so, through the whole thing and then finding out it doesn't work. Yeah, that yeah. would be my general recommendation. I... I the very first article I wrote about this post-launch was, you know, I, three methods, right? The first one is just do it, right? Uh, activate it. It's not enough to install the system. See, the, the, the issue here is you ha it has to activate, right? Um, if you can activate Windows, you're great. You're, you know, you're good to go. You're done. You're done. You're done. Yeah. Um, and so, you can. so the point is that some people can just activate. Right. We don't understand can, why or who, but some people can. Well, we, sometimes we understand why, but sometimes we don't understand why it doesn't work. You know, right. uh, I, 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 I wish I could say with certainty, uh, but it should always work if you're doing, you know, you run setup from the previous version of Windows, right. which you can do uh, from um, Vista, and you can do from 32 to 32-bit. 32 um, if you boot the system be, uh, for various reasons, um, you know, it, it may not work. One of the other things that happens is if you do, if you, depending on the uh, install type and it, depending on the way you launch and uh, set up, you may be given the option to um, format the disk during setup. If you don't format the disk, and this, and by the way, we're always talking about installing to the same partition as the previous version of Windows, okay? If you don't format the disk, what, and by the way, it will prompt you to this effect. Uh, you will get a message from setup that says, hey, there's a previous version of Windows on here, which is, by the way, a great sign when setup tells you that. Um, we're going to save the relevant folder structure to a folder called windows.old. Right. And you should let it do that. Um, the reason is, is it, we all make mistakes backing up and so forth. There may be stuff in there that's useful to have. Um, I would leave that thing there for a little while. It's going to take up some huge amount of space depending on how much junk is on your PC. But uh, leave it there as sort of a safety net. And, and you may, in reapplying all your settings and data down the road, you may say, oh, geez, I'm missing this thing. And it might be in that folder structure. So it's worth having it there. So you could browse uh, that folder structure and pull it over if there's something. Right. It's not, in, it's not uh, protected in any way or in some weird format. It's just a folder structure. Okay. So uh, I would do that. And 
uh, I guess the first. And then step you can is, delete that later to save disk space. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. If you if you find yourself running out of disk space, or you find that you never need to go in there, you can absolutely. There's nothing in there that you you know it doesn't refer to it. There's no reference to it in anywhere. Else. It doesn't need it for yep. Windows Seven. Got it. Yeah. So that's the general the general advice. the The problem for me is in in the testing of this. Uh, this it's very difficult to test because you have to activate every time you install to make sure it works. And, and you don't just, <laughs> and you have to activate the previous version of Windows to make sure it's all legit. And you have to activate the new version of Windows. Right. This requires a separate key for every install, which can be expensive, you know. So by the time I left New York, I had, I had worked with five retail upgrade keys that I had purchased uh, myself. Wow. And then Microsoft uh, showed up finally with a bunch of them uh, for me since I've been home. So now I can use the ones they've sent. But, you know, even the, you know, but the thing is, the, these disks that they send, you look at it and it says, promotional disk, not for resale. And there's 64-bit versions, there are 32-bit versions. Each one of them has its own key. It doesn't say anything on this disk about upgrade anywhere. So you would think it's a full... Well, I don't know what you would think. I don't. How could you tell? So I, I called them up and I said, uh, "Listen, I really appreciate the little gift bag here, but what the hell is how this? Do I, how do I? Well, how do I know <laughs> right. these are upgrade? Right. And they said, "No, no, those are upgrade keys." <laughs> right. But but how do I know that? You know, I mean, you could invalidate all of the testing I'm doing just by sending me full product keys. How do I know this? Right. I don't. I don't know. So I have to take their word on that one. Uh, so. It's been a difficult uh, process, but there, there are all kinds of issues here. Imagine, here's a scenario for you. This is one Microsoft doesn't support at all. Um, you're you're a, a Windows user. You know, you've been using Windows forever. You have a Windows PC. It came with XP or Vista on it. It doesn't matter. Uh, thanks to Microsoft's relentless uh, advertising for the beta versions of Windows 7, you got really excited and said, I am going to install Windows 7 on my PC. You liked it so much, you blew everything else away, and now you're running the release candidate version of Windows 7. Well... Now you want to upgrade to the final version, right? Not supported. Not supported at all. But the he, thing is... That, it, there's that little uh, text file hack. Can you do that? Of course you can. But see, but you had to use the word hack. And Microsoft doesn't like the word hack. Yeah. And it's a hack. Uh, technically, that might... Uh, yeah. So what they want you to do... And, and by the way, I do I recommend this myself for various reasons. But what they want you to do is wipe the thing out. Well, actually, what they want you to do is wipe the thing out, reinstall your old version of Windows, and then go from there. But I mean, <laughs> no, come no, on, that, no, no, no. Right, that's a lot of, that's no, a lot no, of stuff. No. So, you know, it, it's it's understandable to me that that a person in that position would want to do one of two things. Um, they might want to just simply upgrade that release candidate version of Windows Seven to the final version, which again, I don't recommend, but I understand why people would want to do that. Or, um, I don't want to put my old version of Windows back on. I I have an old version of Windows. I I I paid for this. I just want to install Windows Seven. This is a legitimate concern. Well, what happens? What happens if you try to upgrade that release candidate version, right? So if you do an in-place upgrade, it's blocked. Yeah. Now, we can use that hack that you mentioned to unblock it. Will that thing activate? Mm, that's interesting. What about if you just boot the heart, the heart you know, from the, uh, from the disk, the CD, wipe the yeah, thing out, DVD, yeah. install it and activate? What happens then? Does it activate? Hmm. I don't know. We don't know. So, I don't know. I will know. I'll know by tomorrow. <laughs> so that's the next one I'm doing. But, uh, you know, it's a ponderous yeah. uh, process. And, again, uh, there shouldn't be any question about what works and what doesn't work and how you can make things work and all that. There shouldn't be questions like no. this. This is no. stupid. And, um, you know, but they, this is what I'm going to spend my... It'd be uh, nice if they documented this and Paul Therott could play more Call of Duty. And I'm just going to, I'm going to ask oh, Microsoft... Speaking of which, speaking of which... Yes. I mentioned speaking of Call of Duty. <laughs> yes. Which, like, we, we need to halt everything else for this discussion because this is very important. I hurt my finger, as I noted. I know. Uh, he's I got his pinkies in a bandage. I don't know how... What are you going to do? Yeah. Yeah. I can't type. Okay. But I'm okay with that. But let me tell you something. <laughs> See this thing here? Yeah. I can't use this either you need your pinky for uh, for call for the game controller you wouldn't think so but what do you use you are, that for right actually if you hold the controller the pinky is simply under the controller right but the added weight of this thing and the weirdness of it oh i can't i can't, I'm, I'm trying to use sniper weapons i'm trying to do headshots i'm telling you if you wanted to take advantage of me online this would be the weekend to do it your chance to teabag paul right now right here wow well, i wouldn't <laughs> why that's not necessarily the phrase i would have but um Yes, certainly. Uh. <laughs> do they do? Because I'll tell you why I say that. Because okay. one time I played Call of Duty, some 14-year-old 
shot me, and then, then and then did that to okay. me. So and is that does that common practice, official, or was I just did official, I? It is common. They're they're nodding in the studio. The official, yeah. the official term is corpse humping. Okay. <laughs> now my son, who is eleven and innocent, uh, believes that they're just hot, jumping up and down on you, and they're that just this happy. is some, some form of insult. Mommy and Would daddy are just wrestling, kids. It's it's yeah. they were just happy. <laughs> Very happy. <laughs> and um, and now you're having a sister. <laughs> so, Aren't you so, happy? <laughs> maybe a little too happy. <laughs> I'm sorry. Anywho, I'm we're going to have to put the explicit off. tag on this guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway. No, I think, I think it's all been innuendo up to this point. Although yeah, the no, show's we, about to go out, innuendo, but, it, but it, it's been all been innuendo up to this point. Steps right over the line. <sighs> so. Yes, sir. Oh, man. I feel your pain because it, 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 this is something, a Gordian knot that Microsoft could have cut through in, with one memo. Saying this, 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 and this, but but the problem yeah, really is that yeah. they have, in a way, they've said this is what we want you to do. Sure. So I I, I wish Ed will maybe explain this next week. I hope he's on next oh, week. Oh, I'd I love to get him on. Yeah. Um, the one thing he said to me at the launch, which I, well, one of the things he said to me, which I think to be true, is that you know what what you're running up against here is that Microsoft is a huge corporation. Um, a lot of what they do has to be couched in very legal terms. They have lawyers and teams of lawyers. Um, you know, people that do lawyerly things and legal things and all that, and they can't say certain things and, and all that stuff. So I think, unfortunately, this is uh, one of those, the lawyers got involved type things. And, um, you know, they're just trying to be careful. But again, I, they could have done such a better job, you know, if you're doing this, this is how you do it. If you're doing this, if you, you know, it really could have just spelled it out. And, and who knows, maybe the things I'm, Complaining about this, there could be a little overthinking here. You know, maybe this is a very small group of people that needs to do this stuff. I don't know, but I'm telling you, I've heard from hundreds of people, and if I'm hearing from hundreds, that means there are hundreds of hundreds out yeah. there. You know, easily, if not more. Well, and you know, I'm gonna have to deal with this on the radio show. What I, you know, what I've been doing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm saying, oh, Paul Thorat has his whole. It's all on his website. Go to Super Site for Windows. It's all there. Anything Moving you right along. Know. <laughs> yeah, just move along. To something happier. <laughs> just you know? go to Paul's. Does Windows. anyone have a question about the games that are built into Windows Seven? <laughs> I'd like to. Um, are there like to talk? Is, are there games built into Windows Is there Windows something besides pinball or? Uh, or uh, it's the same. Spider it's Solitaire. It's all the same stuff, right? It's the Vista stuff and some internet games. Hold them. Actually, Hold'em's not in there. Really? Yeah, that was part of uh, Ultimate Extras. I remember. And God help you, by the way. Isn't that a little upgrade? Gotcha. Uh, you have that stuff running in uh, Ultimate, and you upgrade, it's gone. What? I paid good yeah. money for Dream Scene. Yeah, it's gone. <sighs> I don't even... I wish you know I... I <laughs> just, we're just going to leave it there. <laughs> it's just... All you can do, if, if for those of you listening... Paul and I are just shaking our heads. Let's just say, that's all you can do. That's all you can do. <laughs> <laughs> I just, you know, I, <laughs> all you can do is laugh. Uh, <laughs> I, <sighs> that's okay. You know, it's going to be all right, Paul. Sure. You know, Windows 8 is coming next. Yes, I know. <laughs> I almost did that to you. You, you preemptively <laughs> <laughs> moved, it, used, moved it right used along. Use the Windows 8. Uh, They're going to get everything right with Windows 8. Ploy. I can't wait. <laughs> um, yeah. What is, okay. <laughs> we've, we've, su we've survived the Windows Ultimate Extras uh, uh, segment, know, of the show, yeah. segment of the show. Now, let's get to signature software. Okay. <laughs> what is that? It's not what we're. It's not the Steve Ballmer signature edition that I have. By the way, you'll be proud huh? of me because remember yeah. you gave yours away, and and okay. so did uh, so did Raphael, so did yep. uh, Ed, so did Mary Jo. You all gave away your copies, and I was being churlish, sure. and, and I said no. As, I'm, as you would, as you would be. Yeah. I'm keeping this. Well, I gave it away because we, we we had the uh, we gave away the Ultimate Game Machine finally, and the guy mm -hmm. the guy who won it was kind of moaning. He was saying, yeah, I guess I've got... Because it, it comes with Vista. and Because uh, it's old. And uh, he said, well, I guess I'll go out and buy an OEM copy of Windows 7. But so, you know, it came with Vista, so he qualifies for the upgrade. It's not a new... <laughs> Don't tell anybody. <laughs> it, 
it might be illegal. <laughs> Upgrade? I don't oh, think so. I, yeah, I don't. I, 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 no, you don't know. You, know, you want to buy the pull I'd check the shrink wrap license on that one first. Unbelievable. You know, and when we did the uh, Windows House party, which I, you know, I, I have it to like say, you guys are having a good time. I, I was, it was totally like sarcastic and tongue in cheek when I signed up for that. And by the time it was done, it was like, I am doing? so it's glad like, I did this. This is a good time. Yeah, it's a good time. It was really fun. And yeah. we had streamers and balloons. We were even on Canadian television. They were like, they picked up the stream and they, they put it on Canadian television. It's like, there's an interesting commentary to be made about the quality <laughs> of Canadian television. Um, but yeah, that's great. I think they were saying, Look what the Americans do <laughs> when a new new operating system comes out. We just dance around the room and Canadians scream. are, you know, on the surface they're polite and they smile and they're really friendly and really nice, but I think deep down, yeah, they hate us. Sure. And well, they are the great white threat to the north. Right. And and so I think deep down they had so they have this story about Windows 7 and they really they put us on to mock Americans but they did it in such a you know nice way you don't yeah, realize yeah, yeah. you're being mocked that's going to come back to get them because eventually we're going to launch a preemptive war there's, <laughs> uh, there's going to be one stub well, too many what, what was that movie the uh oh wag the no oh, no i know what you meant the great uh it was a beer war and we invaded yeah, that, the, canada the Doug, that was the mckenzie brother thing yeah, right? yeah i don't know yeah, yeah. suds something i don't yeah. know suds that sounds good canadian bacon Canadian bacon, yeah. What a great when well, actually no, it wasn't it? It was a terrible movie. It was not a great movie, but it was great uh, premise. It was a movie. Yeah. <laughs> it was a movie. They made a movie out of it. <laughs> it was a movie. So uh, only... I gave anyway, Gabe the, the, the Steve Windows, Palmer so and, and so you know I've done the right thing. Yeah. So uh, you feel nice now? Yeah, I feel much better. And I'm gonna buy OEM editions. Sure. Just cl clarify this. That's Microsoft, did they send you a memo on that? Is that okay? No. <laughs> <laughs> No, Leo, no. <laughs> Leo. What was I thinking? Uh, no, we cannot, we cannot, we cannot legally recommend no. that people... That would be wrong. ...use the less expensive but equally good OEM media, available very cheaply at Newegg.com. But uh, you're, technically, you're supposed to, technically and legally, I guess in this case, um, it's designed for system builders... You know, Newegg is able to sell it because of a loophole of some sort. I'm not aware uh, what it is, but they still sell it, that's for sure. Uh, Microsoft in the Netherlands, I was told this morning, came out with a statement about this saying, you know, in most cases, this is, in fact, illegal. But uh, So you're not joking. They, they really don't like it. Yeah. But they've never moved to stop it in the U.S., so I don't know what to say. I mean, and by the way, when I was, I, I had a conversation with Microsoft uh, yesterday, I think, or two days ago, um, they actually brought up OEM Media as an alternative. <laughs> It's no. like, you got to be kidding me. No. I mean, so. When you buy the OEM, you're getting a full version, right? Yes. It's, it's 112, 100, I think Egghead's like $112, right? I think it's, um, I haven't looked. Yeah, it's a little bit less than, home Home premium upgrade is about 120 I want to say the OEM version is uh, 99 It's somewhere right around there. So it's actually cheaper, right? So. For the people that are supposedly buying the cheap home, you know, me, uh, home premium upgrade version and spending 120 bucks, uh, you know, <laughs> there's this other one that would work just fine. And by the way, because it is the full version, you would have none of these activation worries at all. It would just work. Just a thought. I'm going to buy that from now on. Although I bought the, you know, as you did, the three pack, sure. the home license. Yeah. I got three of those. I put that on a netbook, a laptop. Any uh, advice about installing from uh, a USB key? I mean, it's kind of yeah. A actually, that's my software pick of the week. So okay, we'll oh, save it. Save it. Oh, yep. I have one too, by the way. That we'll go with that. Okay. I I have a software pick. I am sorry. I didn't mean. I actually I actually rebooted there for a second. <laughs> <laughs> there was that thing. His eyes crossed, and yes, I have, have yeah. I have a Windows I, pick. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with that. So what is this signature edition? What is that? Oh, it's not a signature edition, but Microsoft is now in, an, in kind of an unbelievable move, selling PCs themselves. Oh, really? Um, yeah, and this is interesting. Um, what they're doing is they've gone to all you know the major PC makers and they've said, look, we'll sell, I don't know how they pick them or whatever, but we'll sell some number of PCs from each PC maker. But when they're sold from our site, they don't come with any of that crap that you guys put on there. Uh, they'll come with the crap that we make instead. So Microsoft puts uh, its own software on there instead of the weird utilities that you often get, you know, with other versions. So, for example, you'll see things like uh, security essentials. 
you know, Windows Live Essentials, oh. Silverlight, Bing 3D oh. Maps. All the stuff that you go down and load immediately anyway. Yeah, and by the way, Zune 4.0 as well, right? Oh, interesting. Wow. Huh. Now, this is interesting to me because, you know, back when I was working on uh, Windows Vista Secrets uh, SP1 edition, um, you know, I looked at, you look at Windows and you say, well, Windows is Windows. That's nice. You could write a book about Windows. But the truth is no one uses Windows in isolation, right? Windows is part of a sort of an yeah, ecosystem. Of course. And uh, you don't have to go too far away from Windows to find these things to sort of plug in the holes. Windows Live Essentials in Windows 7 is an obvious one because th those are literally... 50% uh, of it anyway, uh, utilities that used to be part of Windows. You need Windows Live Essentials to kind of complete the picture. So I actually cover most of this stuff in my book. This, this in many ways, that what Microsoft calls their Microsoft Signature Software, maps almost exactly to the list of additional software that I happen to cover in my book. That um, you recommend everybody install. Yeah, for the most part, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there are some differences. They, they install uh, some Adobe stuff as well, which is interesting, really? like Flash and Adobe Reader, yeah. See, I don't like Reader. I put Fox in on. Yeah, I get that a lot from people. I actually still use Reader. I'm okay with it. And I, I do use uh, Adobe Acrobat, but not all the time. I use it for um, during the, the book creation process. We need it uh, for edits and so forth. So I usually have Acrobat on at least one of my computers as well. But yeah, I get, every time I mention that I use Reader, I get emails from people say, oh, you got to be, you know, use Fox. It. And I've looked at, I've used it. It's, so it's fine. In fact, I think we recommended it at one point. Um, but I think on a sufficiently modern computer, there's not much of a difference performance-wise, which, of course, will trigger emails from people who believe otherwise. So, <laughs> you know, so, whatever. So uh, this gives Microsoft gives customers what Microsoft says, this is the software that we kind of recommend. Well, yeah, and also it gives you that true Windows 7 experience, right? Because one of the nice things about Windows 7 is that if you install it by default, which, again, you know, typically 90-whatever percent, 95 or more percent, of uh, customers would never install Windows themselves. But for the people who do, what you see is a really clean experience, right? One icon on the desktop, the recycle bin, a, a minimal set of uh, tray icons, and I think it's three or four, um, you know, taskbar buttons, right? Media Player, Windows Explorer, Internet Explorer. I think mm -hmm. it's those three. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it, it presents a very clean look, you know, at the system. Now, typically when you buy something from a PC maker, they load up the start menu with all kinds of extra tools, right. and trays, extra junk. There's icons all over the desktop. They're still doing that? I thought that Microsoft was kind of uh, discouraging well, that. Well, they can't prevent it, but they can discourage it, right? And now what they're doing, I think the, the next logical step here is when Microsoft goes and they sell uh, some PCs from these makers, you know, uh, you're getting a clean PC. It doesn't have a bunch of junk on it. And uh, I, think that's, I think that's a cool idea. I mean, there's a, it's a weird uh, thing, you know, when Microsoft's selling software, uh, selling computers, rather. Um, but it also gives them another step toward that Apple-type experience where they don't uh, technically control the hardware aspect of it, but they are controlling which ones they sell. And they're working with the PC makers to ensure that these things are I think that's, both decent machines and, you know, have the right kind of software. I think that's good. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I do too. And it, I'm just looking at the store. They sell Lenovo. Uh, they sell Asus. They sell Acer. Yeah. So here's Sony, the issue, though. Dell. So let's say let's say you are in the market for a Dell computer. Yeah. Let's just use Dell as an example. And you're in the uh, you want to buy a laptop of some kind. Let's say the Adamo. Uh, it's pretty. I like that one. Yeah. So they okay. sell it. But yeah. the thing is, uh, they only sell three different kinds of Dell laptops. Mm -hmm. And within those kinds of Dell laptops, you don't get the same kind of configuration options. You may have a choice of colors. Uh, but it's pretty much a stock configuration. And it is. I don't. I'm looking here, and I don't. I like it too. Yeah. This color. That's it. Yeah. And that's that's pretty much what you're looking at. So it's a little bit less of a um, uh, a selection than you would typically get out in the real world, so to speak. But you know, there, there's an interesting psychology to choice, right? Uh, there's been a lot of studies about uh, the overwhelming number of choices we have, and how that's actually detrimental to. Walt the Mossberg today in the Wall Street Journal said the good news is you have a lot of choices. The bad news is you have a lot of choices. Yeah, right. Once again, stating the obvious. There's so. <laughs> I, think so the, uh, I think the word for that is yeah tautology. But okay. Yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But thank you. Well, but thank it, you. but thank it's you. true, right? But this it is, is true. Uh, it is part of the problem. Yes. Uh, right. So well, I can yeah, see why Microsoft might want to provide I, a path. The best I of both said worlds. The same thing. Yeah. So I, I, yeah. the way I said it was Microsoft's biggest strength is the size and scope of their ecosystem, but Microsoft's biggest problem is the size. You know, you can't control it. It's a it's an unwieldy, mm -hmm. uh, huge uh, collection of companies that all have their own interests at heart, and uh, they don't always do the best thing for the customer because they're out to do their own thing. 
So, you know, Apple has less choice, but they, you know, sometimes that's an advantage. It's not always an advantage. Let's be very clear. <laughs> sometimes it's an advantage. But sometimes. Sure. All right. Shall we, are we, have we, have we, have we beat this? We beat this to death? Yeah. Ours to death? For now. All right. No. Uh, before we move on, I want to, uh, we're going to talk about uh, some big wins and some big losses for Office. Twitter in the Microsoft context. Mm -hmm. And uh, more. We've got your picks, my picks. But before we do anything else, I want to mention our friends at Citrix, which rhymes with picks. Citrix <laughs> is my picks. Uh, I want to mention something that uh, is, is of specific use to uh, people who do support. So it would be people who are in the you know so software support space. Uh, or maybe they're doing IT. This is something called Go to Assist Express. We used Go to Assist on the screensavers ages ago, the big, you know, the the, the earlier package uh, to help people on the show, and really found it to be a wonderful, wonderful program. They've updated it, improved it. Go to Assist Express is, I would say, without a doubt, the most important tool in any support professional's toolkit. Same remote access. Uh, Underneath the hood that makes go to my PC and go to a meeting so easy to use, so fast, so efficient, uh, so uh, secure. But they've added features for the IT guy. For instance, of course, it's very easy to set up a, uh, a session. So you're on the phone with somebody and they're having trouble. You said, look, I'm going to send you a link. You send them a link. That's all you do. It's a URL that's generated by GoToAssist on your machine. They click it. And the software installs is very small. It's just a Java stub that installs in their system. And suddenly you're there. They can see you working. You could be on the phone still. You could chat with them. So you've got that right away. Very simple. Your customers don't have to have anything pre-installed. You could just be on the phone with them. Say, here's a link. You send it via email. You could send it via chat. But it gets even better. Now you can also do unattended support. So the customer doesn't have to be there. They could just say, okay, I'm going to give you permission to get in. And now anytime you need to, you can get in. You can have eight sessions at the same time, which is very handy. If you've ever started an install or a scan on one machine, now you wait, you bring out your paperback and, uh, or your Kindle or you know your iPod and you sit and you listen. Now you can immediately go to the next machine and the next machine and the next machine, up to eight machines, get eight sessions going at once. Uh, you've got a full assay of the software that's on that machine, whatever's running, whatever security software, and exactly which operating system version is on there. Of course, it's still got the great 24-7 free tech support that all of Citrix's products have. 128-bit SSL encryption so your clients can rest assured that they're secure. And by the way, there are a lot of tools out there and many of them have been compromised and exploited. So you want to make sure you use one that's secure. That's why I recommend GoToAssist. Try it free for 30 days. Just ask your customers, how was the experience for you? They know they're going to have some signups. Works on PCs and Macs, by the way. Mac to Mac, Mac to PC, PC to Mac. Uh, go to assist.com slash windows. Try it right now, free for 30 days. G-O-T-O, -O, go to assist.com slash windows. We thank them so much. Uh, we thank Citrix for their support for all of their stuff. Did I do something wrong? Oh, I said go to assist.com slash assist. Thank you. On the video, I've got the wrong uh, tag. It's windows. Go to assist.com slash windows. Thank you. And now, my friends, we return to the <laughs> the daytime troubles of Paul Thorat, Windows Kill expert. <laughs> yes, Paul Thorat, a mild-mannered editor and reporter, suffering the blows of Windows. It's sad. <laughs> it is sad. It's sad. No, you you know what you're Sorry, doing. I... You're doing the Lord's work here. You are helping wow. people, and I think that that's. You know, uh, look, Microsoft should just... Well, mostly, mostly pirates, apparently. That's my I core audience. It drives me crazy. As many of you know. They should, be, uh, they should be just on their knees thanking you. Yeah, that's exactly what they do. <laughs> Every day. <laughs> just what, that's Thank just you, what it's Thoreau. like. Thank you. You're so nice. Thank you. You're such a nice man. I would like you to meet our lawyer. <laughs> just to make sure. You have read, sure. read that shrink wrap you'll have. So uh, this is an interesting story. Los Angeles has... Uh, has said we're not going to use Office anymore. We're going to this is this is this is not just this, Office, but also Exchange, right? You're uh, kidding. Going, no more Exchange, they're, even. Yeah, they're doing the email thing, yeah, with Google, Google Docs and Google Mail. Yep, it's a big deal. 
you know, it, it's funny because the actual dollar value, which is seven and a half million dollars, is, you know, uh, not, not chump change, but to uh, companies with the, you know, quarterly revenues of Google and, and Microsoft is not, you know, sort of a statistical rounding error in some ways. But what this is really about, is, of course, is anytime Google can point to something like, you know, <laughs> the municipality of Los Angeles and their 30,000 workers all switching over to Google solutions. That's something they can help sell uh, their products with to other governments and to uh, large companies, right? Uh, because any, any government like that, the size of Los Angeles, is essentially a, an enterprise corporation as well. And uh, that's a huge win for Google, you know, and a, and a tough loss for Microsoft. Well, you, what you don't want is you don't want this cascade of other cities doing it. Yeah, and that's, this is how it starts, I would say. So this is interesting. You know, Google has always been able to point to a couple of companies um, nothing particularly notable in my opinion, but uh, a couple of companies who, you know, big companies who are using their stuff. But the truth is, you know, they don't really make too much money from the Google app stuff yet. But, uh, you know, this is the type of thing that gets the ball rolling. Mm -hmm. So this is interesting to me. Hey, by the way, I've just done a, uh, a check online. Mm -hmm. And uh, let me just put the, pull this up so you can see it. Uh, your okay. official uh, pirate name <laughs> is Tax Evading Jim Hacking. Awesome. Okay, awesome. just, uh, you know, in case Microsoft calls, you can say, Arr, this be tax evading Jim, <laughs> Jim Hacky. Jim Hack, that's good. Yeah, maybe it's Hack. Actually, it that's is, pretty... I would say, I, I would say, it's, uh, when they ask, I'll say, it's Hack A. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Tax evading Jim Hack, ready great. and willing to break into anything you've got on your system. Don't <laughs> you mess with me, bucko. What's your pirate name? I should enter it. Should I try it? Yeah, why not? This is some some website that does a completely scientific. No, I, I I didn't believe it was the actual you know World Pirate Organization. <laughs> it's a, well, it might be. It's a no. <laughs> it's scientifically generated according actually, to get a pirate name dot com. Yes, legally binding. <laughs> I be noseless Maurice Reed. Jeez. <laughs> wow. Okay. So don't mess with me. I'm. I, I, I do kind of have a peg leg. That's interesting. <laughs> Uh, okay. Uh, oh, uh, how's what's the status on Office? Uh, the new, uh, 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 you know, cloud-enabled Office. Can I try it yet? Because I'm really uh, I'm interested. Somebody asked me on Twitter, mm -hmm. given the choice between Office and Google Apps, which would you use? And I said, well, um, we use Google Apps all the time because it's convenient, it's a great way to share apps. But if it's just me working on my PC, I'd probably use Office. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And when, when you, if you add the cloud and sharing, uh, it's pretty compelling. Right, right. And even in my own, you know, circumstances, I could picture working, you know, just using the cloud version. I mean, it's funny. Um, I, I'm a writer, but I don't. I use some minuscule portion of what Word can do, and that stuff looks to be in the in the web version. So you never know. Um, the problem is right now it's in a tech preview. Sometime in November, Microsoft has announced that they're going to come up with a public beta version of Office 2010, but that's the traditional suite and also SharePoint, the server, the Office server. Um, but the Office web applications are on a different schedule, so the, the, the beta version of that, presumably public beta, will not happen until later. And we don't know. I don't know when. Yeah, because I really, I'm very interested. Yeah, I am too. And, you know, I was a little disappointed with the, the tech preview, which I do have access to because... The one thing that I could I would actually use regularly, like I said, would be the Word web app. Right. But the Word web app in the tech preview is unusable. You can all you can do with it is view uh, documents. You can't edit yet. So yeah, yeah. That's not coming until later. So I don't know. You know. I can't wait. That, I'm looking for. Yeah, it. I can't either. And and you know, there's some. You know, as you know, I'm in, I'm incredibly excited about uh, Windows Mobile, and uh, there is a an update to the office version for windows mobile that's coming as well. And I'm hoping we hear a little bit more about that soon too. What would so mean? It would be windows mobile on like a so, cell phone and it has full office on it. Yeah. Well, I don't know full office, but it has some version of office. That's they've called it pocket office. They've called it. Now it's, I believe it's called office for mobile. Pocket, or mobile pocket office. office. Pocket sounds, is, that a sounds, pocket, is that an office that in your doesn't pocket? doesn't sound right. <laughs> Are you just trying to be efficient? <laughs> what you doing? Uh, Playing pocket office. Playing pocket office. Um, I'm using I'm using the pointer tool right now. <laughs> yeah. I oh, here comes Clippy. Go. 
So, <laughs> um, yeah, so I guess Windows Mobile 6.5 has uh, the new version of Outlook, which actually includes some of the features from Outlook 2010, like conversation view and so forth. Hmm. Um, a, a coming update, and, and the big question with this update is how they will distribute it, or if they will distribute it. We'll have the 2010 analogs, you know, for Word, PowerPoint, um, I think there's a OneNote app, and Excel, I think, are the, are the applications on the phone. But the nice thing about the phone stuff and the web stuff is that you can pass whatever the supported document types are through those applications, regardless of where they are, and they'll retain all the formatting. They, Microsoft calls this uh, document fidelity, but it's, the idea is that even if the, uh, the tool you're using doesn't support all of the features, if you're using them in that document, if you have complex, um, you know, let's say animations or something in PowerPoint, you can pass it through the web version of PowerPoint or through the, um, the phone version, make edits, and it won't blow away the stuff that it doesn't support. See, that's a nice com a, a combination, I think, is the, is yeah. the cloud, yeah. the desktop, and the phone, right. especially, especially if one version doesn't screw the other. Exactly, that's the yeah. key. So there, are, there. Are, listen, there are decent mobile office uh, solutions for you know for the iPhone for other uh, mobile operating systems, obviously. But um, you know, just like on the on the web, you know, you know, Google Docs, okay. But you know, what you're really looking for is Office, right? I mean, that's you know, that's what you want, right? It's what I want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I like this idea. I yeah. love the idea of uh, OneNote, for instance. I think is such a great tool. Yeah, and it gets more interesting when you can host your documents or your mm -hmm. notes like, and you know, share them. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And right. then, uh, and then, um, actually, I didn't ask this, but uh, with Windows Seven and and what looks to be a a, a, a lot of manufacturers doing touch yeah. uh, with Windows Seven, OneNote would become even more intriguing, I would think. Yeah. So maybe not because it's I not mean, stylus. Because I, it's, 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 I, I just. Right. I just had this conversation with somebody and I, you know, I th sort of thought of it like, well, yeah, if you like drawing in the notebook with crayons, you know, I mean, <laughs> it is like that. It's like yeah. with your thumb. Yeah. 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 Thumb drawing. But Microsoft believes, you know, that OneNote will eventually become as popular as Outlook. And what they mean by that is it's something that you leave open on your desktop all the time because you're always using it. Not as the main task, but as to uh, take as notes. Yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, to collect information right. and, and all that stuff. Yeah, I could see it. Bing did a deal with Twitter that got a lot of attention. Then Google followed suit. Imagine, imagine you don't know anything about technology. Okay. And you just dropped in on this conversation. <laughs> and, you did, and that's what I want you to imagine. It's like it's like listening to people talk Swahili. Google you just Gaga. Said, you, just said, you just said Bing, Twitter, Google. Right? You're right. right? You're it right. Sounds, We're so inured to it. It sounds ridiculous. It's baby if you really talk. About it. Yeah. It is baby talk. So let's talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry. So Google did, just did a deal with Wawa to cover right. Zuzu. Ooh. And I believe I have just pooped myself. <laughs> <laughs> so, Somebody needs to burp me. Um <laughs> Okay, and now I don't even remember what the deal was. Is Bing did a de Bing's a search engine for Microsoft did a deal as did Google uh, to include Twitter tweets. <laughs> it's not getting better, yes. and nope. Facebook status updates in their real time well, okay. search. Both companies did the deal with Twitter. I, I believe only Microsoft has the deal. Only with Facebook. Microsoft has Facebook. Facebook. Thank okay. you. But, that, okay. but that's still further down the road. And, Google's and doing something else they call social search, which will look at your Google profile. Yeah. And see all of your social uh, graph. They call it your social circle from that. And then search you know they, that. You know what they should call that? What? They should call it creepy search. <laughs> right? Because yeah. this is how the stalkers are going to keep up with search. it. Stalker search. I, I, uh, I can find out anything, Paul Theratz. <laughs> it, it looks Doing like Leo is uh, recording again. I think I'll swing by the office and see if he sees me through the window. Yeah, oh, dear. Oh, yeah. dear. That's why I park my car out the window now. I'm watching it at all times. <laughs> Don't yeah, pay no attention to the guy in the uh, long jacket. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Dane came in yesterday and closed the curtains and said, "Dane, open the curtains. I'm watching the car. <laughs> Keep those open." <laughs> Anywho, uh, <laughs> Anywho. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I'm I'm of a mixed mind on uh, the hello. <laughs> Did you lose something? Yes, <laughs> the monkey. The monkey. Uh, the, monkey the search monkey, lost... monkey is excited. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, What's on his little cape? It says Woot. It's a Woot.com flying monkey. Wow. Well, 
You know, I... No, I don't. Never mind. So... <laughs> Never mind. Uh, Never mind. Just a goddess just walked in the room, and I'm just going to keep on talking, as if that weren't so. A goddess? A goddess. The world-famous Kiki Stockhammer, ladies and gentlemen. Do you know who Kiki is? Oh, my God. Of course I do. You're talking about new tech... Uh... Yeah, the, the, the woman who's demoed the video toaster for years at every trade show in yeah, history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Allow me to express my love of this woman. <laughs> I have never actually met. <laughs> well, we'll talk to you guys in a minute. I'm still in the middle of a Windows Weekly. It's all right. You're welcome to see me push the buttons and, and anything you you want. Kiki taught me everything I know about the TriCaster. I just watched her. She taught me everything I know about the Amiga. Frankly, she taught <laughs> yeah. us everything we know about women. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> now she's not happy. <laughs> now she's have, not I've happy. gotten into something very creepy. <laughs> we're, we're here on uh, Kiki Weekly. <laughs> <laughs> the name Kiki Stockhammer just sends chills down every nerd's spine of a certain yeah. age because she hasn't sure. been doing that in a while. So if you're not right. a toaster guy, you wouldn't know. It doesn't matter. She's frozen in time for all of us. She yeah. is. And you know what? She she looks exactly the same. She looks way better than the Amiga Ball thing, let me tell you. That thing is aged. Not it's so not, well. In, yeah. Not it's so flat well. and gross. <laughs> it's weird. Well, anyway, resolution. Yes. <laughs> let's let's continue on. What were we? I'm sorry. I just completely got thrown. It's okay. We were talking about Twitter. It's, it's like to... I'm. It's like if you were sitting. It's like oh, when Bob Hope shows up on the Tonight Show, right? He just walks on. It's like, Dad. yeah, a walk in. Yeah. It was a walk in, but but I but I've never met Kiki. It was like, okay, I'm calm down now. Wait, you've never met her, and she just walked into your office right now? Yeah, I've never met her. I mean, I've only seen her from afar, demos demonstrating the video toaster. Why, why are you talking to me? <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with you? Listen, listen to me. As one man to another apparent, apparent man, I <laughs> I recommend highly. <laughs> they told me if I bought a red car, I'd meet chicks, but boy, I didn't expect it to happen so fast. Yeah. Great. All right, let's continue on with the serious, uh, so the serious but, but, windows but now. It, uh, yeah. Meets Frankenstein kind of thing. Right? <laughs> yeah, that's it. Hey, you know? hey, Abbott! Hey, <laughs> Abbott! I used to love that. So, <laughs> you know. Easily amused. You know, like a Bella Lugosi. And, uh... Okay. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> There's no way we're going to get a reasonable discussion out of the Twitter thing, so why don't we just There's nothing on. more to say here. <laughs> move is, on. It happened. Uh, who cares? If you're listening in, uh, by now you've realized the truth of the matter. Paul and I do this show just for ourselves. It's really to amuse ourselves. In fact, I'm actually shocked when portions of the things we talk about actually appear online in some kind of an MP3 file. It's kind of stunning, isn't it? Yeah. PowerShell 2.0 was uh, just released. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> what? I don't know. I'm just I'm reading the chat room here. PowerShell <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God, even that would put... You know, that's... <laughs> Jesus, what's wrong with those people? But why are they not digging up old videos of Kiki Stockhammer? Well, let's do something. Yeah, get to work, chat room. Come on. Jeez, you're there for a reason. Do she's something. She's in a um, she's in a in a band yep. called Warp. Is it Warp Nine? Warp Eleven? That uh, does Star Trek themed songs. Yikes! And uh, she and her husband are in the band. He plays a guitar. She sings. And uh, I'm trying to book them for my. Macworld live keynote. Nice. Yeah. They're actually here with the uh, the TriCaster HD uh, uh, caravan to demo mm -hmm. to demonstrate the TriCaster HD. So if you could just I, wrap you know, this show up. I was thinking you do need an HD TriCaster. <laughs> and I know you just replaced your existing <laughs> yes, TriCaster, yes. but still. We need another one. I think they brought yeah. it. I think they brought one. But anyway, let's move on. Uh Let's get our audible pick uh, here, and then we're going to get your tip of the week, your software of the week, yep. and uh, and then it's... I would say we have to wrap this up it's eventually. It's kiki time. So, so uh, audible.com, my friends, are great sponsor. They do the audio books. I have really been in an audible binge lately, and I've just been loving listening to the audio books uh, because mm -hmm. I'm spending more time in, in my new car and driving around a lot. And it has a kind oh, yeah. of, so what is I can't car? talk about it till Sunday. <laughs> I just w keep waiting what? for you to ask me. <laughs> I Why? said like Why? new car Why? like what four times and you didn't say, you didn't bite, you didn't do anything. Um, you know, I, I'm usually so uninterested <laughs> in the stuff that goes on in your life, but actually, <laughs> no, I, I, I'm sorry. I didn't, uh, I heard you say car. I, I, I got a new car and... Uh, a, actually, let me tell you the truth. Okay, so uh, let me explain to you what happened. Okay. You said something about the car and this yeah. is what I thought. 
you must have said this before, and I just didn't. You weren't paying attention. I, I actually felt bad Did that I wasn't aware that you had a new car. I just bought it a couple of days ago. Okay. And, it's, and what uh, is it again? It's a chick magnet. Uh, 2010. <laughs> so you got to really. It's not. It's not a Corolla. Then it's like no. A, it's not a Corolla. It's, I see. All I is can tell like you is it's bright red. Crisis car? Is that it, no, it's okay. it's so far beyond that. It's really more like a second childhood car. Really? Yeah. It's like a. It, does it have gull wing doors? Or Practically. <laughs> wow. It's my first auto with a spoiler. Let's put it that way. However, with a spoiler, <laughs> like an actual spoiler, not one of those like crazy, stupid things that they put in dumb cars. Like an actual requires a spoiler because at a certain speed, this thing could actually flip over. Yeah. Wow. I'm so excited. Anyway, I'll tell you about that later because Sunday, we but, can't talk about it till Sunday. That's when all will be revealed on Twit. Why? And then you'll be hearing about it for uh, quite a while on Windows Weekly. I got to pay for the damn thing. Okay. <laughs> no, is it's... It, what does it have, like geek logos on it? No, it's a new sponsor. And um, and I bought the... I went to, to check out the technology that we're going to be talking about on these ads. Mm -hmm. And I kind of uh, fell in love. So... For it. Yeah, 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 I kind of went for it. Uh, so... Okay. And that's neither here nor there because right now we're talking about audiobooks. But the point was this thing that we're going to be talking about on Sunday allows me, when I get in the car, my audiobook starts. And it's so cool because, I, you know, it's just like you get out of the car, it stops, pauses, you get back in the car, it continues on where it left off. Yeah. But it's in my oh, pocket. But it's in a great, oh, really? Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Now, now you understand my excitement? No, uh, but uh, I'm getting there. It's all right. I, I can't claim it's to have right. any actual it's understanding, a, but a, it, you know, it's okay. You really don't have to understand. You have to. Yeah, you have to be there. Audible.com/slash/windows is a place to go to get your uh, your Audible fix. Your first book's free when you sign up for that gold account. You cancel at any time. Keep the book. So we like to recommend books. And you're back on your bond kick. Yeah, I keep. I go in and out. You know, and we're gonna. I'm sure eventually we'll get through the entire list. You may remember, by the way, the, the movie version of this book, sort of, uh, is one of the Connery movies where they actually, right. they dress him up as a as a Japanese guy. Do you remember this? He, had a, he wears like a, remember? Did, did they do the eyes and everything? Yeah, well, yeah, they gave him makeup and they, it's, oh, it's they gave him the, the, the bowl haircut and. You're kidding. It, I don't remember no, that. I don't think you weird, can get away actually, with that today. But the book you? does, in fact, involve him going to Japan. So it, it's sort of loosely based on the book, uh. It's a pretty sexy cover there. You Only Live Twice by Ian yeah. Fleming. And actually, when I, I was listening to uh, this, and they, the guy imitates a, like a Japanese accent when he talks in Japanese. No. Right. Yeah, and it's weird. Simon Vance, who is one of their best. Let me yeah, play a little bit. Good, good, I yeah. love Simon. Let me just play a little bit of it, because mm -hmm. he's really one of my favorite readers at uh, Audible.com. That's a nice thing about Audible. You can go listen to any book. Bowed low and scurried out of the room. Oh, I love that voice. Tiger turned to Bond. You have gained much face, Bond or son. <laughs> it is <only> <laughs> No! <laughs> Told you. <laughs> you have gained much face, Bond or son. Oh, um, you are very clever. <laughs> I can't yeah. believe he said that. I know, I know, I know. This is an older recording. But I, we know yeah. Japanese people sound exactly like that. They Exactly like that. So it's, it's very accurate and... Uh, <laughs> Wow. But good, you know it's, it's good, fun. It's tongue in cheek. This is this is the fifties. <laughs> it's a good book. That's a classic. It is a good book. You only live twice. Simon Vance doing the funniest. That's hysterical. You know, they the, the, the movies, of course, are all loosely based on the Very loosely. Books. Yeah. yeah, sometimes more loosely than others. But yeah. if you're familiar with the movies, um, you may remember that in the, the that one movie that James uh, or um, George Lazenby made. He, uh, James Bond gets married, his wife gets killed, and that actually happens in the book version of that story oh, as well. Yeah, in fact, horrible. that that movie is fair, is pretty close to the book. So, um, you only live twice is actually the story that comes after that. So, uh, the aftermath of his wife Bond death, the fact, widower fact, he's bereft. Okay, fact is the story. Yeah. Didn't he? And and of course, in the new one, Casino Royale, he mm -hmm. also his girlfriend. Oh, I don't. I won't say I, what happened, but something bad happened to her. But I think, yeah, and, and I have to think that that is a, was an homage of sorts. And although, of course, in the context of the new James Bond movies, what they're doing is they're they're restarting the character. So they are. They're. I think they're ex they're trying to explain in this first movie why right. the character has the attitude he has toward women. Right. Uh, because his one attempt at getting close to somebody doesn't necessarily for, work out. The truth really is that everything Paul and I know about women, we didn't learn from Kiki. We learned 
for me and Fleming. Well, we have various um, different uh, things we learned. Influencers, <laughs> yes. <laughs> And um, this is one of them. Oh, what a great book. Uh, you know, I think Simon Vance does all of the Bond novels, or many might. of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, yeah and they're all, uh, almost all of them are on uh, Audible. What mm -hmm. a, That would be a great... And they're, they're fairly short. They're like candy. They're six hours, seven hours. Yeah. Easily, and I th I'm sorry. It's a week's worth of listening in your community. Yeah. Yep. There's some good uh, short stories as well. I think we might have recommended one. Um, there are at least two collections of short stories, uh, which are also good. Oh, I, I do remember... Uh, Bond. Yeah, I think For Your Eyes Only was one, and uh, the Hildebrandt. Ra no, the Hildebrandt Rarity was one of the stories. Um, there he is. There's there's a Sean Oct Connery. Yeah, yeah, in yeah. In his uh, glory, uh, pretending to be Japanese with a. <laughs> it wasn't yep. it wasn't a very effective. I think the Scottish uh, brogue kind of. Uh, mm. I think he squinted and he had black hair. <laughs> Sean, <laughs> you <laughs> watch out. Here I come. It's hard to be tough when you're wearing a kimono too. I mean, let's face it. I love it. Hey, I'm a big fan of Audible. I know you will be too. If you've never listened to an audiobook, this would be a really good choice because it's it's uh it's it's very cinematic. It's a you would love this, I think. Give it a try. Just go you can do it free. Audible.com slash windows so that Paul gets credit for this great pick. Our recommendation of the week. You only live twice by Ian Fleming, unabridged, narrated by Simon Vance. Audible.com slash windows. We thank him so much for their support of the Windows Weekly Program. Mr. Pauly, you yes, have sir. a tip for us today. You've Really, this has been the tip-laden show, so you know you mm -hmm. don't have to have a tip if you don't want to. I have a tip. Okay. <laughs> I'm giving you the option. Well, uh, it's based on, it's, it's, it's essentially feedback to some uh, emails I've gotten and so forth. You know, people listen to, um, you know, the podcast, or they they read some of the stuff I write, and then it's, it's interesting what they come away with. You know, so we've I've I've talked about the common sense aspects of uh, keeping yourself safe online, for example, and um, you know, some people have uh, actually come in and said, um, "Well, so I listened to what you said, and and if I understand what you're saying, what you're saying is uh, if you just ex you know are you know have common sense when you're online, you don't even really need a, a antivirus, right? I mean, you just." Uh, you just be online and just use common sense and you should be all set. And it's like, <laughs> you know, it's a little more complicated than that. Yeah, it's a little more complicated than that. I, I think you can overthink uh, virtually anything, especially security. And I just, to, to reiterate uh, my feelings on security and client computing and so forth, it basically boils down to this. I mean, if you have, uh, if you're running Windows, you need to install some kind of antivirus. I happen to use now the Microsoft uh, solution. And the reason I do is because it's small and lightweight and it's fast and it, it, it is not annoying you know it doesn't pop up constant little reminders and little bubbles and and it doesn't do any of that stuff so i really like that kind of thing to me that's the big that's i mean i mean it, the security of it is almost secondary you know i used to joke with uh, windows uh live one care that it actually wasn't doing anything in the background but it would just pop up windows occasionally on a timer to make you think it was doing something and that just by virtue of the fact that you thought you were protected, you would be safe. It's sufficient, um, yeah. Yeah, it was almost enough, you know, but that, obviously that's not the case. So you need good antivirus, I would, you know, maybe thinking of it more holistically, you know, good anti-malware, right? Windows has spyware protection built in. If you're using uh, modern browsers, IE8, uh, Firefox, et cetera, um, this anti-phishing tools, anti-worm tools, anti-malware tools, all that stuff is in there. Um, one of the more controversial things that I've heard and... Uh, uh, depending on who you're listening to or, or reading or whatever, is, uh, some people will uh, recommend not enabling automatic updates. And, oh, and that's when, bad advice. Yeah. Somebody, somebody it, called me on the radio mm -hmm. show, said, I got a virus, and uh, my friend, the geek, told me, you turn off auto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let me... What is the uh, rationale I'll, behind that? Yeah. That makes no sense. You could, it's funny. If you follow the entomology of this, or, uh, you know, the, the background <laughs> the, of the this... The butterfly collection? Oh, yeah, oh, you mean the etymology. Okay. <laughs> etymology, sorry. Of this particular uh, type of advice. It almost all goes back to, I think it was the second service pack for Windows in, you know, at 2000, you know, where it went, it went bad and... Uh, there were kind of problems there, and people were like, oh, you got to turn, you know, don't up, don't just update, you know. Um, here's here's how it really works. Uh, when you're driving a car and you, there's a seatbelt in the car or an airbag in the car, you know, some tiny percentage of the time that device, which is there to save your life, will in fact hurt you in some way, right? You know, they're the, you know, the thing blows up in your face and you smother or whatever happens. I mean, that does happen sometimes, but the vast majority of the time, those things will save your life. And automatic updates is just like that. Yes, it's possible. 
that every once in a while there may be an update that screws something up, and certainly we can document those times that it has happened. But you know what? By keeping up to date, you're doing the smartest thing you could possibly do. And if there are the occasional screw up, and I, honestly, they're very occasional, but whatever, uh, I think it's worth it. Um, you have to enable automatic updates. I, I, and people get really bristly when I say this, but you would be an idiot not to uh, enable automatic updates. I mean, come on. Uh, that's just common sense. Automatic updates in Windows does all kinds of things. But one of the things it does, if you have your, um, you know, in things like Defender or Internet Explorer, or the Microsoft Security Essentials, all of these things, uh, they can update their signatures and their protection capabilities through automatic updates. You gotta, you gotta keep that on, obviously. I mean, just obviously, and 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 just in general, keep all of your software up to date. You know, occasionally it makes sense to go to Windows Update and see what's up there because sometimes Microsoft throws things into uh, optional updates or things that won't automatically get installed. It's a good idea to see, you know, what's available. There seems to be, and, uh, I think, like three levels. There's cr critical. Mm -hmm. uh, recommended oh, and optional, yeah. right? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. In Windows Update, in yes. Windows Update, and critical, of course, you always want. Oh, you must do. You just those have will to. be installed. I mean, unless you turn off, you could turn it off, but you should. You know, don't. Recommended I, I, seems to be often drivers um, uh, updates yeah, to things yeah. like Silverlight, where you probably do want sure. to do it. By the way, there's actually a fourth level, and this is kind of interesting in in Windows Seven. I, I, of course, I've already enabled it, so I can't even tell you how, what, how it's worded uh, right now. Well, I could look at this other computer, I guess. But um, if you open Windows Update for the first time, there'll be a little uh, a text link at the bottom that says uh, provide updates for other software or something like that. And this is where you enable the things that um, aren't going to come up otherwise, like Windows Live Essentials, for example, would fall into that category. So it's is it not all Microsoft or is, could it be Adobe too? No, it's all Microsoft, it's all Microsoft right now. stuff. Yeah. Okay. You know, and eventually, uh, listen, they've been talking about this for 10 years, I'd but love, eventually third-party stuff yeah. uh, should be in there. I mean, obviously, drivers are essentially third-party, so that, that's, maybe that's the start of it. But, uh, yeah, you know, for, for high-profile uh, applications that are hacked a lot, right, because uh, hackers have uh, moved on from the OS in many ways and are now targeting applications. Like the Adobe stuff is very famous for that Microsoft Office. Uh, famous attack point right now, or big attack point. It makes sense for that stuff to be in there, so hopefully that will happen as well. So it's not recommended, it's important, I think, is what they, they're okay. telling me in the chat room. They call it important. Well, uh, you know, you need to look at that stuff occasionally regardless because the, the really important stuff, the critical stuff, will be installed automatically if you have automatic updates on. Some of the other stuff won't be. So, I, you know, every once in a while, I think it makes sense just to go in and, and refresh the view and see what's going on yes, there. Yes, yes, yes. And, uh, you know, just check it out. I'm with you on that one. And then beyond that, beyond that, after all this stuff, that's this is when the common sense kicks in. I mean, you know, you're browsing around, and come on. I mean, uh, you know, don't fall for every fake uh, security software pop-up that says you have a virus and would you like to download the tool that's going to fix it. I mean, you think, think, please, um, when you get that stuff. And what sites are you visiting, by the way? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Come up, eh? yeah, no kidding. So it's not just common sense. I mean, uh, part of the common sense is doing the right things to secure your computer as well. There are actual technical solutions uh, that you should be smart enough to uh, make sure are there and updated. And then after that, it's behavioral. So it's, it's, I guess my point is it's not just common sense, but you have to, there, there are a couple of steps you can take to secure windows that ultimately fall under the category of common sense, but they're actual you know, technical tools that you should enable. And finally, our software of the week. Yes. Um, oh, and before we get to the software week, I wanted to discuss briefly last week's pick. Uh, I got a bunch of email, of course, from the uh, VLC users, as I knew I would. Uh, last week, I recommended something called Media Player Classic Cinema uh, as a lightweight uh, video playback uh, tool. And the reason I recommended it over VLC is that because I said that it did not have a keyboard control for uh, putting the screen into full screen mode. Now, as it turns out, it does. The thing is, it's not documented in the UI. So, for example, in most uh, applications, I'll just use VLC because this is the one we're talking about. If you go to the video uh, menu and bring it down, there's a full screen option on the menu. But there's no key control next to it. In other words, it doesn't tell you right there what the, so what the, um, you know, what the shortcut is. Most applications in the menu will have the, the options that are available. And then to the right, it will tell you the keyboard control. So the first time you go, you find the option. You look at the keyboard control, the shortcut, and you can use it from then on. Now, the reason I recommend Media Player Classic is that 
A, it's documented, but B, it also works the way most applications work when you put them into full screen mode and window, which is all, all plus enter. The reason this is important to me is that this is on my kid's computer. My kid doesn't know keyboard controls, and if it's not listed there, she's never going to find it. So it's nice that she can go to a menu and choose on the thing, but that's an extra step. I mean, without knowing that it's, you know, things are easy once you know they're there, but if it's not documented in a straightforward fashion, it's not something you're going to find by mistake. It turns out you can also click on the screen in VLC to full, put it into full screen. That's great too, but, but you, you know, got to know it. Otherwise you wouldn't do it. Yeah. It's kind of a technical, um, I didn't notice it until, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's for so, geeks. Yeah. That, that's, that was the point of that. That's all. So, um, there's nothing wrong with VLC. It's just that for a little kid, uh, i.e. a typical Windows user, I guess, if you want to put it in that case. Uh, it's a little, it's just a little obscure, that's all. So there's nothing wrong with VLC. I didn't mean to uh, suggest otherwise, but I just think it could be a little more obvious. It's designed and, for by and for geeks. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it does other stuff, too. I mean, there's, there's complicated things you can do with media players, like you can load uh, caption files in and, and all that stuff. And, I'm, you know, that's nice. But I, I just want, I want my kid to be able to double click on something and have it work, so... So um, we talked at the beginning of the show about another way to install Windows, and this is important for people, for instance, who are using netbooks that don't have CD or DVD players. Yeah. Now, um, right. So if you buy Windows 7 from the Microsoft Store, right, uh, store.microsoft.com, mm -hmm. uh, you can order media, and they'll send it to you in the mail, and that's nice. But, you know, if, you're in, if you want a more kind of an instant feedback kind of a thing, you can download an ISO file. Oh. Problem is, most people don't have ISO Burners. capabilities or no, you know. You Actually, know seven to... does. If you have once you have seven, you can just... seven does. But yeah. I mean, this is before you have seven, presumably. This is right? how you would get to seven, <laughs> right? Yeah. But the thing that's cool about the Microsoft tool, so they provide a tool called the Windows Seven USB slash DVD download tool, and what it allows you to do is take a Windows Seven ISO file, i.e., uh, uh, the the image of a setup disk, and burn it to a DVD, which is great. You can boot with that or place it onto a USB flash drive. That flash drive one is really interesting because that will work on a netbook, which doesn't have an optical drive. Um, you have to have one that's four gigabytes or bigger for it to work. You know, I think the, the smallest ISO 32-bit uh, version of Windows uh, 7 Home Premium is roughly 2.2 gigabytes, uh, and it goes up from there depending on which one you get. So um, you need four gigabytes in order for that thing to expand right out to the into a file system. And they... they they, um, you know, configure the, the USB uh, drive such that it will boot. And you can plug that thing into your netbook, uh, turn on your computer. Uh, if it doesn't automatically boot off of that thing, you can select it through the BIOS or through the, you know, the initial setup tools. And, um, you know, launch Windows 7 setup. By the way, um, when you're doing that, you're doing a custom install with upgrade media, which Microsoft will tell you in some cases is actually illegal. <laughs> so, um, but... <laughs> Uh, but I would tell you, in most cases, is not. So I don't. <laughs> so, I don't. I could make the ISO from my upgrade disk rather than have to buy it from. This will work with any ISO, right? I I don't know that it would. I haven't tried it with any ISO. I I, I don't know if it's specifically designed only for uh, Windows Seven. It might actually be only for Windows Seven. But if I have um, a Windows Seven installed disk, can I um, burn? Yeah. An so in other words, right. So let's say you bought. Let's say you do have the disk, right. but you have a, a netbook that you want to install. That's the situation I'm in. Yeah. So what you would have to do is use a third-party tool that would turn the disk into a um, ISO file, right? And then you could use this tool uh, to take that and put it on the USB key. Got it. So for for that sort of thing, I have to think about this for a moment. Um, I always forget which what I use. It's image. Why can't I find this image? I... Yeah. What do I use for this? Jeez. I only need these. I need these tools. These tools so infrequently. Uh... Recommended something too. Oh, I used yeah. There's a tool I use. It's like Windows Imager or something so, like that. It's yeah, a name so, for it. Yeah. Let me look this up. I will look it up right now. Hold on. I apologize for not just having that. But anyway, this 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 uh, does this not obviate it? No, I mean if because if you have the disk, this is only for if you image burn. Tool, is that it? It's image burn. IMG yeah. burn. Exactly. IMG. Thank you now, to Boom Sharker <laughs> X. Thank you. That's exactly the tool. So if you're running Windows XP or Vista. And you bought the upgrade version of Windows 7, whatever version, doesn't matter. Uh, and you get it on a disk. And you want to install it on a netbook that does not have an optical drive. How do you do that? Well, you use Image Burn, create an ISO, use the Microsoft tool to put the IS, the, you know, to expand the ISO onto a USB key, boot the netbook with the USB key, and then you can install it that way. Excellent. 
That's kind of a tip, too, when you think about it. It is. It's a tip slash tip cum software. There you go. And uh, our question of the day from um, Alex C. in the chat room, he says, this all seems pretty difficult. Is there a <laughs> documented keyboard shortcut I can hit to upgrade to Windows 7? <laughs> no. No. And uh, I, have, I have a little tip that will help you with uh, your oh, upgrade. Right. And it's right, a right, little right, right. program. You probably know about it, but I mm -hmm. just somebody told me about it probably in the chat room, and I... I've used it now on a number of uh, installs. It's called Ninite. Do you know about Ninite? Yeah, I do. I, you know, uh, I almost use that as my pick. I've gotten at least a dozen emails from people about this. Uh, I haven't had time to test it as thoroughly. I as did, I'd like. and it worked great. It works great. So, this what what this tool is particularly good for, and, and obviously, it's primarily designed for the stuff you would download uh, online, like the free stuff. Um, in the cases where you're doing a migration install of Windows Seven, where you literally wipe out an existing Windows installed. It has all your applications and stuff on it. You know, the Windows Easy Transfer tool is nice for backing up settings and documents and other data files. It will do nothing about the applications. This is a nice way using this checklist like you're showing on the screen where you can kind of check through the stuff that you had on your previous install and have it just bulk install it for you, which is really cool. Now, the problem with it is uh, some of the stuff I want to install is uh, commercial software like Microsoft Office. Well, they put the trial you, version on it, so you could so stuff you can download is the idea. Yeah, it's it's stuff that's only available online. Right. So, hopefully, uh, over time, but, but this you know, will grow to uh, encompass some of that other it's, stuff. It's yeah, it may not be everything, but I have to say, maybe I'm just a okay. big fat geek. But it's the stuff I wanted: Microsoft Security Essentials, yep, uh, yep. Cute PDF or Foxit Reader, uh, Irfan View, Paint.net. It's all the free stuff. Both versions yeah. of Flash that you're going to need, Silverlight. Um, mm -hmm. Java. Oh, no, it's, it's, yeah, that, that's a tremendous, Drive tremendous box. pick. So really yeah. Good. Yeah, it, yeah. And it's, it's, you know, it's funny. It's almost like they're reading my mind. It's just, I mean, Evernote. <laughs> it's the stuff that I love. Yeah. Steam. Yeah. You know, you want to be careful with something like this because you could click through this and be like, oh, yeah, that'd be good. Oh, that'd be good. You know, one, one of the things that's nice about a clean install of Windows is that you don't have all the gunk and the, <laughs> yeah, the corruptions on there. And, and what I try to do is that there's a core group of applications that I need every single time. I mean, there's right. nothing you can do about that. But some of the more esoteric stuff, like that image burn utility, for example. Um, you may you know, not I don't need that, huh? I don't typically install it until I do yeah. need it, right? All right, I'll uncheck that. All right. uh, no, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm but not I always put like putty on. I always put FileZilla yeah. on. I mean, I, so. Sure. And then what happens is you, so you, you, you go through the shopping list, and then, you, then yep. you click a button that says Get Installer, and it downloads a small EXE file. I mean, not a big one. Right, that you right. will then run after you've installed Windows that will then, you can walk away in an, in an unattended fashion. all that stuff, yeah. Downloads no, and installs nice. them, and it's amazing. Right. Well, this is the, uh, the holy grail, uh, you know, in some ways, right? And, and a, a future version of this that includes, you know, if you could configure this to say, look, here's my network share. This is where Office is. This is where Photoshop is. Right. This is where whatever is. Uh, add those to this. Get the latest versions of everything else online because there's no reason for me to store copies of that locally. Um, beautiful. I mean, yeah. that's almost all you need right there. Well, there we have it. This was the Windows 7 definitive, all you need to know, <laughs> everything you'd ever want show. Wow. And yet next week, I'm sure. <laughs> There'll be more. There'll be more. <laughs> the, beauty of, the beauty of covering Microsoft is you never really run out of stuff to say. That's, yeah, that's true. That's, that's it. That's the beauty part. Paul I'd like Theron, to run out of bad things to say. No, no, no. You know what? That'd be, that'd be a happy day. This is why uh, you are so valued in the Windows community is you tell, <laughs> you tell it like it is. You're mm -hmm. not, in, not in anybody's pocket. You just, you represent the consumer. And frankly, that's what this, that's what this no, whole network for is. For the right about. price, I could be in someone's pocket. And I just wish someone would show up at the check. What is your number? What would your number be? To make me go away forever? <laughs> Just to Come say, on. Paul, yeah, I often thought this, you know, because I, I, I work really hard for integrity, <clears throat> preserve yep. my integrity, and for 30 years I've been doing this. And and I'm just thinking, but, you know, if I went out, I'd like to go out with a bang. Right. Like, just whore myself completely. Yep. And that would be it. My career would be over, but I'd be uh, in Bermuda. Right. So what is that number? The minimum? Yeah. It would be $2 million. No, 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 Paul, Paul, but Paul, the, Paul, Paul, But Paul. to be realistic, you'd need at least double that. Yeah, yeah. 10, 10. Yeah. 10 million. I'm trying to be realistic here. No, I mean, Ten million, you know. And if you have debts like I do, twenty, thirty million. The more, the better. Absolutely. Maybe a red car of some kind. Here's, a, you uh, want to know how I do the calculation? I say, okay, I will take this. I will mm -hmm. pay off all debts. I will, you know, give some money yeah, to my yeah, mom, yeah. and then I want to take what's left after the tax man gets his chunk. Oh, and live off of the. And I the want to get what interest. five percent? Yeah, five percent. And let's say I can get five percent interest, right. which is optimistic. But let's say I can get five percent. Yeah. 
Sure. And how much? So I I figure I need at least uh, two million a year cash <laughs> a year. Oh, for the interest, you mean? Out of the no, interest? You, no, no, no. The so, interest. So I, that means I have to get forty million, and then after tax, so I'm talking a hundred million is my number. You know, this is turning into a like a Clive <laughs> Owen movie, but I. I I, I I have set my sights, I guess, significantly lower than you. you I, two million. I don't know how you're going to live on that. Dude. I said absolute minimum. This is minimum. But see that see that that's the problem. That's why I can never really go out with a bank because no, I'm not worth. No one's going to pay 150 million for me to say, you know, finally I've seen the light and the best uh, operating system in the world is uh, Ned's w operating system, NOS. And if you don't have it, you're you got it. You you're a loser. And see, yeah, I'd say, say that for without bursting out laughing on the radio show. Hey, boss, well, why it costs money, right? Because you would be saying this uh, naked on top of a pile of money. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> In fact, that's what you would do. you would just laugh like a Bond villain the whole time. <laughs> you know? From your island. My recommendation, Save though, it. if you're going to get Ned's operating system, get the extreme version. <laughs> that's yes. nose. It's the one that comes with Dreamscape. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which is yeah. crucial. You, you yeah, miss Dreamscape, right. you miss Hold'em, Ned's Operating Ned's System operating Extreme system. has yeah, it. Exactly, exactly. And then there's the sound of a cash register in the background. <laughs> and make sure, if you're going to get Nose, get the 128-bit edition. <laughs> yes. see 17 right. petabytes of Just RAM. like Windows 8. Yeah. <laughs> it's better than Windows 8. Windows 9 <laughs> won't even see Windows. Right, right. 128-bit. Uh, Paul, thank you so much. You demand. Sure. Make sure everybody. You go to his website where Paul is. Paul stayed up, has not slept in five days because he's been installing Windows and everything. He's got it on his refrigerator and his microwave oven. He can give you the upgrade guide on anything you've got. You you know, just, it's funny you said this. Uh, not, not to drag this out even further, but the other night I went to bed. I tossed and turned, and my wife said, "You're going to get up, aren't you?" And I said, "I can't sleep." And I got up and I came down here for two hours, and did some more. I can't. It's it's just, it's killing me. It's like in my head. How can you not? Give this man all of your money right now. Well, you don't have to give me any money. Just um, love. Is that all you do this for? You know what? Actually, I, I, I said this something. It's funny. Um, uh, I, I can't remember the comparison I made. I'm not looking for recognition, but I would like not to be shit on. <laughs> you know, that's all. And whatever you do, don't teabag him if you kill him, okay? Yeah, please, yeah, yeah that's Just a, walk that's a on. That's a, that's a must. No, no gloating. <laughs> yeah. That's all he asks. Yeah. For all that he does for you. Middle of the night installs and all. And his look, at he, he gave up a finger for you. <laughs> and not that finger, the other finger, the little finger. And, <sighs> and, and, and all he asks is that after you kill him, you don't hump the corpse. That's all. It's not too much to ask. It's not too much to ask. I don't need respect. I just don't need disrespect. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Good for the kids. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's for the children. <laughs> for the kids. <laughs> it's, it's all about the it's kids. All, Paul's at Windows Super Site, Super Site for Windows at winsupersite.com. He is the news editor for Windows IT Pro. And my friends, he is also the author of the most important book of our generation, Windows wow. 7 Secrets. Wiley and Sons, you must buy two copies now. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it would keep some serious doors open right there. <laughs> but meanwhile, it's time for playtime with Kiki Stockhammer. Paul will. <laughs> I am so envious of you. your heart out. We'll take, see you next take, time. Take pictures. <laughs> On Windows Weekly.